All right, everyone. So uh, we're just going to review. Um, we're going to review uh, the ES. So I just wanted to go over some things. First of all, um, uh, my method or my approach to Wyckoff. You know, I just wanted to kind of break it down a little bit. The first is, you know, this higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. Right, so this uh, trend, in reality, this is an oversimplified model. And um, if we take this, we will see it in reality. The you have what did I do? In reality, you have. something like that, right? So uh, what this really means is there are three types of waves in a trend. The three types, you have your rally waves, you have your pullback waves, and you have everything else, all right? So this is important to understand because there's, in reality, there's a lot of um, noise, a lot of noise. And the key is in identifying the rally waves. If you can identify the rally waves, the impulses, they automatically figure out what is not a uh, rally wave. And if you can figure out what is not a rally wave, then um, you just you kind of take that out of your picture. And this, this becomes that. Because really what's going on is you just have rallies, rally and pullback, and everything else is noise. I don't know if it's meant to confuse you or that's just the way the market is, but if you saw it without noise, it would be the easiest way to get rich, All right? So if the markets actually did this, it would be, it would just be beyond the gift because uh, you just buy every pullback, right? So the first thing we'll note is we have rally waves and we have pullback waves. And here you have one pullback wave, but in it, basically you have, typically you have, um, Hell to do. You have one. You have usually you have more than one. You have like two, two or three. Three sometimes. Why is that the case? Why? Because there's a lot of accumulation or reaccumulation occurring. So typically you have at least two or three pullback waves. You don't have one pullback wave most of the time unless it's really a deep wave. So you might get something that's like, and then, you know, it goes all the way deep like this, and then it shoots up. So something like that, it, it just, it's a really deep uh, wave. Or it's a bullshit wave that leads to noise. Now, even that, then it, it you know, the second wave usually breaks the down low and then it goes, so. Yeah, I mean, this is usually the case. So, anyway, the point that I'm trying to uh, mention is you got to know this. You have to be able to identify all right. All right, second 
think is There are only four pullback scenarios. So what are they? The first pullback scenario is going all the way to the origin of the rally, which is the zone from which the rally came. The second one is to stop it right here, Ice and Creek. The third one is to go to a POC level. The fourth one is to do a spring or up thrust. So these are the four that will occur all the time. These are the four pullback scenarios. If you don't believe me, go and check any trend. You're gonna see all, almost always it falls into these four scenarios go ahead and check the es and you will see again and again and again same thing happens over and over again that uh and go check it uh, you know whatever mark you want you see that this is basically the situation one you know the buyers here is these guys exhaust and uh you know the buyers and all of that all right now i'm done with this all right and then what do you do over here is you just look at a lower time frame. Done. So step one. Identify rally wave on a higher time frame, whatever it is you're using for your higher time frame. And then identify uh, four pullback uh, scenarios on low, on high time frame. And then on that one of those four pullback scenarios, look for a lower time frame change behavior. So for example, you may have a change of behavior on the spring. You may have it uh, uh, on the POC. You may have it on a test of a breakout. You may have it on a test of zoom. All right, so these are the four pullback scenarios and then identifying the change of behavior. So step one, step two, step three. So that's it, That that is it. Now there's more to it that I'm gonna go over. Um, So today I'm going to go over tick. All right. Now I'm looking into this because I find some value in in this. All right. It's a uh, intraday market internal that measures. Buying versus selling strength. Buy, subtracting stocks on an uptick minus stocks on a downtick. That's it. 
the, for example, if you have a thousand up, three, six hundred down, you'll have four hundred up. All right. I guess I mean, this is as simple as I can do it, right? Now, I'm going to show, uh, kind of explain, you know, the, the easiest, uh, how to incorporate this in the, in the wave, all right? So this hasn't really been done before, but I didn't, I'll explain it. First thing is, every uh, market has a tick, every index. You have the NICE. You have the NASDAQ, you have the, you know, all of them, but these two are the big ones. And by NASDAQ, I mean NASDAQ composite. So NASDAQ is like 100 stock, but the composite is like, I think, uh, like 2,000 plus or something like that. It's much more. So these are, these are a lot of stocks. This, this is not the regular 100 NASDAQ. I'm talking about the composite, right? So that will... Because 100 is, um, it doesn't, it's not enough. You, you need more. Uh, the S&P, uh, you know, this, there's also a tick for the uh, 500 S&P stocks. But these two are the key ones, the NICE and the NASDAQ comp. All right. Now, I, in my opinion, this is like the uh, internal that, uh, I think that's the only internal that only looks intraday without yes looking at yesterday's close. Anyway, so the point that I'm trying to make is on a wave chart, obviously we're looking for a uh, increasing tick, high tick, high, high tick. So where are your high ticks going to be found? Well, on any wave, you always have a start and a middle and end. So you have a start, you have a middle, and you have an end. In a rally, in a rally, I should say. Rally and also, you know, to some degree. Okay, let's just keep it any wave, all right? But I, this is a particular uh, example of a rally. That's why I said rally. In the start, you typically will have high uptick because it's up wave. Here, you have a high breakout uptick, and you might not all the time, but you'll have a high climax uptick. What have I done? Oh, boy. Yeah, I don't know what the hell I'm doing, but here you can consider this a uh, a high. Uh, a high, oh, <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. Mm. Hi, 
change of behavior uptick. I think this is a better way of explaining it. In the beginning, you have a high change of behavior uptick. In the middle, you have a high breakout uptick. And here you have a high climax uptick. All right. The most obvious is the breakout uptick. Again, the most obvious is the breakout uptick. All right. So now I'm going to show you examples of this tick. We'll try to find some change of behavior upticks. We'll try to find some breakout. It's the easiest. It's like brain dead easy to find this. And then we'll, uh, we'll find some climaxes. It's not that easy to find. All right. So using the tick. All right. So a couple of things is um, when, when the tick is green, meaning high, right, should have a high, should have a green bar on your ES or your NASDAQ. Just keep this in mind. All right, just keep this because if it doesn't, if you have a high green uptake but you have a red bar on the ES or the NASDAQ, there's something not right. There's something like totally messed up. It could be selling, those stocks are being sold in the futures or accumulated if it's a high red uptake but there's a green bar there's something going on so we're going to see this and uh yeah, let's go so i i usually don't go into this but now i will all right so what we'll do So this is your tick at the bottom. See the bottom of the histogram? This is your tick. This here is the NASDAQ, and this here is the ES. So we're going to look at the waves, and we're going to try to find change of behavior, on a tick level, this has not been done before, folks. So I'm showing you something that I think you're going to like. All right, using the tick, basically market breath. So the easiest one, which I, you know, is very easy, is the breakout. You just take a low and you see, you know, it, gets, it goes, you have a red bar and you validate it with a tick. So in this example, we have this bar, right, that breaks this low. Anytime a higher low is break, you watch the tick. Now, I don't know how else to say it. Just watch the damn tick when a higher low is taken. Now, when this, this red bar takes out this low, this is not normal. In terms of over here, it looks so you know uh, could be a, you know whatever, but but look at the tick. The tick went from minus sixty nine to minus three fifty eight, close to close, with being supported by two hundred and eighty nine stocks going down, from close to close. Minus 69 to 360 uh, to uh, 289. That is significant. Why? You just look at the background. Since the open, you don't have a print like that. See this from uh, the red bars in the background. Forget the, uh, this this over here. This is before the 830. So you know you have to look at 830 onward because it's an intraday uh, internal. So anything before intraday is just garbage. So you just look at 8.30 onward, 
this is the biggest red bar. What's that mean? It helps validate this breakdown right here. This is a valid break. Because of the size of the bar relative to the prior bars. It's not just the reading, you know, whatever, negative this, negative that. It's not just that. It's the size relative to the prior bars. That'll tell you whether it's significant or not. There is something else. There's this uh, this white bar. This is uh, 563, but you had a red bar not making a higher high. So something was off, off here. Something's not right. But anyway, I'm just looking for confirmations, not for divergences. So I just look at this, and we see that you have a big, big red bar, big red tick, on a break, 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 right? So now you have follow through, and now we take a look at this low, this, excuse me, this low here. We look, and we see the break. We see on this red bar red bar it's not a green bar i don't want to look at a green bar i'm gonna look at red red green green so red look at the size of this break this is the biggest yet there's a problem folks this is a clean breakdown all right it means that the chances are this breakout is legit. So a uh, breakdown is legit, whether you, now, however you want to trade on the pullback and all that. This is very important. Why this participation? Participation. All right. So we're going to chillax. We are going to wait. We're going to wait. Once again, we see this white uptick, but we see a red bar. So how is it this po how is this positive, but it's a red bar? So that's divergence. Now I don't, I don't want to get into that because I think I have to experiment more because I think there's a clue that is in this. Um, it's almost like um, distribution that it's being, um, that's evidence of distribution. How the hell, you know, you have the biggest in all of these bars and it's not green. It doesn't make sense, right? Like this white is bigger than one, two, three, four, five, six, all, like more than 10, 12 periods, but it's not green, it's red. So it's like they're selling, as these stocks go up, they're selling in the index futures and it gets confirmed by the bar right after. But anyway, I'm, let's just look at the breakdown, breakdowns. So we take, we know that this is the low, right? What are we going to do? We're not going to do shit until you see the next break. This is the next break right here. See this red bar that, that, that breaks this low? Now we want to know how many stocks have lower price, prices meaning their prices went down, 352. Now the number itself is not as relevant as how big this is relative to the prior bars. Yeah, the number I guess is relevant, but more importantly is it, this, this bar is bigger than one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. It's like the biggest in, in like an hour, right? We like that. That's good info. That, in my view, it means that price action is being supported by market breadth, validating the price action. After that, market goes down. It goes down. All of a sudden, at this low, all of a sudden, at this low, 
we have a big green bar and we have a big white uh, tick, uptick. What is this? Is it diverging? No. Is it, you know, is it doing, is it acting weird? No. This is, is it climactic? No, because it's coming from the lows. If it was uh, on a couple of bars up, then it would be climactic. This is coming from the lows, so this is your change of behavior tick. This is your change of behavior tick. Meaning buying, buying the lows. They're buying the lows here. So now, price goes up, 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 up. It increases here, which gives us a pause, right? Is this climactic? Maybe. But this one here it also increases tick. And after it increases tick, you get a red bar. So this is the climactic. This is the climactic one. How do you know? Because climactic uh, behavior does not, typically does not have follow through. And also, I mean, when it gets to, um, when it gets to um, resistance areas, if it's resistance, climactic, does not have follow through, there's a problem. Now, so it has red. After that, look again. What do you see? Big red which is the biggest in one, two, three, four, you know, all of this periods. So this was the bullish change. This must be the bearish change. We call it bear, COB, pick. Right there, that's the bearish uh, change of behavior tick. Now it goes, 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 goes here. Tick is getting very high. Are we breaking anything? I don't know. Now, if it's climactic, what do you know? It should have no fall through. Does it have fall through? It doesn't have fall through. Bingo. Climactic tick. So in this change of behavior, tick from close to close, you had an increase in 408 stocks when up on an uptick. Now, is that a lot? Fuck yeah. That is the biggest since, since all the way back here, since the down move started. So that's how I know it's like this, this, this is not just something, uh, it is coming from the lows. It's a change of behavior tick. In the perspective of the wave, as it's going to resistance, you get the climactic tick, which is confirmed by the red bar after it. And then go over here, it comes back down to the change of behavior tick, you have another climactic tick, which is the biggest, I don't know how many. And uh, then after that, it also does not have fall through and instead has a green bar reversal. So bang, okay? So this is something that I'm experimenting with. Um, the easiest, easiest, easiest thing, if you want to start playing with this, 
is just to focus on the breakout. All right, just focus on the breakout tick. All right, and uh, eventually you'll find climaxes. What is the goal of this? The goal is you're gonna be able to you're gonna be able to trade pullbacks really nicely on an intraday basis. Why? Because first thing that's gonna happen, the market's gonna have a break. Then it's going to have a climactic action. Then it's gonna have a little change in behavior. Then it's gonna have a climactic action to end the break uh, pullback, and then reverse. So it's going to have the breakout on the rally, with the breakout tick. It's going to have a pullback, which will either have a climactic tick or not. And then you'll have a change of behavior tick reversal right after the pullback, which will set up the trade. So this is uh, something I want to definitely look into, right? For example, where's the change of behavior, the next change of behavior tick here? Where is it to say the market's going up and it's right there? That one. Right there. Right there. That's biggest since the breakout tick. That's the Yeah. So that th this is what I want to I want to see and um we'll definitely look for more examples. The the other thing that I noticed was really interesting is how to like not validate the breakout, right? To show that it's that when you have a breakout that there's a uh, issue with it. So for example, here Why is it that we have a breakout, but it's red? Why is it that you have a breakout above this high, right? Because this buying wave set up the um, this move, but on the breakout, it's red and less participation warning sign and later on it kind of over here on this little bar you finally get that increase but something's not right i mean you should have it on the breakout not over here and what what i've been explaining is if it's up there I mean, to some degree, you could, you could say, okay, you know, maybe it is a, a, a breakout, at least on the NASDAQ, right? But not, not here. Something's not right. It, this bar should have had a breakout. It didn't. And it starts going negative right here. Right? But for me, the dead giveaway is the is this these breaks. These breaks, because the rest of it, it kind of gets into maybe coulda, it's interpretation, this and that, right? Like so, some things just don't make sense. For example, you have a red bar, but you have a green tick, uh, a white increasing tick you have another red bar and you have a up tick how can you have that so i think these there's some um stocks that that are being sold into they, these divergences they need to be looked at as there's something not right. Now I'm not sure what what's going on. Um, let me just see. How can you go from the green bar has a red tick 
and the red bar has a white. So these are clear divergences, right? So I think this has to do with distributive nature. Why? Because after this stuff that doesn't make sense, look at the move that, that occurred. So something is, there's something to these divergences, right? But instead of trying to read and all of that, you just look at the breakouts because you're going to get in the pullback anyway, right? So anyway, this is a lesson on tick. Remember the three types, the change of behavior tick, the breakout tick, and the climactic tick. And um, this all goes into context of your support and resistance and trend and higher time frames and whatever else that you use. But it's a really cool arsenal why you'll feel very, very comfortable. For example, if I'm going to, let's just say if this rallies and it pulls back and I want to put a short on, right? I'm very comfortable shorting right here. On, as it comes to the zone or an upthrust or whatever, I'm really comfortable shorting this red bar because it's not just a baseless red bar. It's a red bar supported by a significant increase in selling in the market. So I'm very comfortable selling a red bar that is the result of a lot of stocks being sold off. I would not be comfortable if it's just a red bar. Buy, buy, selling a red bar or buying a green bar is not it could be very random, right? If you have a green bar, red bar, this could be very random and you don't know, you know, how random it is. But this red bar, is this random? Answer is no, it is not random. It, it, in other words, you understand the why of the red bar. The why of the red bar is the tick. The why of the red bar is the market is selling off because the stocks are selling off. The red bar is occurring because the stocks are being sold and a significant number of them. So once you have the why explaining what is happening, it will create an understanding and it'll make it easy for you to say, yeah, this is a good decision because you understand what happened, you understand why it happened, and that will give you the confidence to click. And also just, uh, that's, how should I say, this is almost required for trading, understanding the market mechanics, like understanding the, the why. Otherwise, if someone tells you, why are you gonna trade the pattern? What pattern, head and shoulder? why the hell would I trade a head and shoulder? It happens all over the market. There's a left bump, a right bump, and a middle bump. How do you know that if you crack the neckline, you're gonna go the equal amount of the head down to the low? You don't know. There's no sense in pattern. But there is a sense in saying the market is down because the stocks that make it up are being sold off and this is how many and it's a lot well let me sell we're at resistance and it's selling off click right all right folks have a good day bye